The players only meeting that we discussed yesterday, I want to get John's take on this. And it was something we broke it off the hook sports.com. There were other people talking about it. And we appreciate that. And they want to give out a lot of credit, but that's okay. That's fine. But um, let's dive into this. John, a players meeting. You and I discussed it briefly uh, last night for this football team. Why does it matter or does it? I say that it matters and it's very significant because I don't think it was all Joe Milton's fault that they had uh, some uh, out of sorts throws or out of sorts catches or lack of chemistry between the quarterback and the receivers. But I was impressed by the fact that he said, it's all on me. I'll take the heat for it. I thought that showed great leadership. Why do you think that players only meeting matters or, or do you not? I don't think it matters. Players only meetings are, are cliche. Uh, you know, I, I believe more in just go out and do it. You don't need to talk about it. I've seen teams have players only meetings and come out and just get manhandled the following, uh, the following game. Sometimes they play well. I, I just don't think it matters. Uh, Joe Milton taking all the blame. I don't know if that's such a good sign. Uh, he wasn't throwing the ball well, and he said in the past that he has a hard time letting mistakes go, that he dwells on them too much. Well, to me, this is kind of dwelling on it. It's just, I'm taking all the blame. I did badly. I'll do better. I, I don't think it was necessary. Football is a team game. And some of those throws, yeah, he was off target. On some of the throws, maybe a great receiver would catch, but – when you're hitting somebody on the back shoulder pad on passes like that, you're not helping them out a lot. So he was at fault, but I just think maybe that's overdoing it. Interesting. Caleb, what do you what's your take on that? John, aren't doesn't it depend on the context of the players only meeting? And I talked about this yesterday. You know, if if you're four and six and on a five game losing streak and Jimbo Fisher's your head coach and he's about to get fired and you call a players only meeting, that's desperation. But isn't there and I brought up, and you probably remember this. I thought it happened, but I can't confirm it. Didn't Peyton Manning have a players-only meeting after Tennessee lost to Florida in 97 because it was so mentally derailing to lose to Florida again? And didn't that really help them refocus the next few weeks after that? Uh, I don't remember that, Caleb. Uh, I would guess that Tennessee had a players-only meeting every time after Florida, <laughs> after the Florida game. Um, I mean, the, the schedule turned that way. That was a very exclusive one of Tennessee's most talented teams. So uh, I think they would have done what they did anyway. But, yeah, I mean, that it, – yeah, it's hard to – it's hard to va evaluate how just how much that means. If it makes the players feel better about themselves, that's good. Uh, but we're only two games into the season. Tennessee hasn't played a competitive opponent. So I, I just – I just don't think it matters much right now. Your column – <clears throat> following the game against Austin P was pretty critical as well. It should have been Tennessee did not play their best game. Somebody within the program told me uh, that it was embarrassing. And um, I'm curious what you think of Tennessee now that maybe you is different than what you thought of them a week ago. Yeah. And this is a moving target. Uh, things cha can change every week. That's great point. Uh, I mean, I, I wrote after the first game, I thought Tennessee was better than I thought it was in preseason. Then after the second game, it's like, whoa. what? Uh, the reason it looks so bad is we expect there are certain things. We've got a track record with Josh Heupel now. Line his offense up against an inferior opponent, and it's points galore. The points just keep coming. An inferior opponent just can't stop that offense we've seen it again and again Tennessee averaged over 40 points per game for his first 27 games and he wasn't loaded with talent that was a depleted roster the first year he did that when he almost hit the 40 point mark so that was stunning to me that you're playing the worst team on your schedule well maybe Virginia's worse than I thought it was and I thought it was really bad but you're playing an FCS opponent, which is so limited in numbers and in talent. 
and you go out there, and that was still a game in the second half. So you're not substituting guys, giving guys playing time, and checking out second and third team teamers. You're trying to win a game, and I thought that was pretty stunning. It was just it was the worst performance of a uh, Josh Heupel era, I thought. Yep, I, I did too. Um, and we could talk about weather. <clears throat> we could talk about all kinds of issues, but um, I think it's needless to say a little worrisome. We'll see how they bounce back in the swamp. Uh, portions of the program, this portion, in fact, brought to you by Andy Mason Real Estate.com. Go to Andy Mason Real Estate.com. Over 40 years of business right there in East Tennessee, in Knoxville. That will certainly take care of your real estate needs. Best prices, best service in the biz. Andy Mason Real Estate.com. Caleb? John, I was, I've, I've been, in, and David told you, I've been on the throw out the Orange Bowl train since it happened last year. I just thought, and, and it, but <laughs> one thing I did take into account that shocked me on Saturday was I felt the thing Clemson did in the Orange Bowl was they played just extremely soft coverage to take away the deep ball. And Joe Milton methodically did make accurate passes over the middle. And I thought that was a strength. How shocking was it that? It seemed like Austin P did the same thing. Virginia's doing it too. Teams are very committed to not giving up those giant big plays to Josh Heupel's offense this year. And didn't it seem like Joe Milton was the exact opposite quarterback throwing over the middle that he was in the Orange Bowl last year? Uh, very much so. Uh, I thought the Virginia game was a continuation of the Clemson game. We saw the same Joe Milton. Yeah, he had a couple of bad passes in a series. Uh, but by and large, we saw a guy – playing under control, not forcing things, making fairly accurate throws, uh, just as he did against Clemson. And then uh, against Austin P of all teams, we saw the Joe Milton from Bowling Green 2021, uh, where the plays are there and he's not making them. And yeah, those, those passes hit receivers sometimes, but they're thrown 100 miles an hour. And it's a back shoulder catch. And maybe some NFL guys make those plays. Uh, but it, bottom line, Tennessee had open receivers. And that's what we've come to appreciate about a Josh Heupel offense. It seems as though receivers are always open. But you got to hit them, and he didn't do that. I mean, it wasn't like he was throwing into a small window there. They were open, and he just missed them, and I think that's cause for concern. I don't know why he might have been more anxious in that game than the one before. So it makes me wonder if this will be how the season goes, that there will be good days and bad days, uh, accurate days, not so accurate days. I don't know. We got to get we got to get more evidence, but I don't think after that game. I'm not as sure about Joe Milton as I was before that. And I was pretty much on his bandwagon after the Clemson game. Joe, my, <clears throat> here are my thoughts on this team. And again, we haven't seen a quality opponent. We can throw weather, blah, 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 out there. It's Austin P, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think here, here's how you're going to see this team develop is you're going to see last year was an incredible passing offense, a very good running uh, offense, and a eh, defense. I think the way this team is going to be successful is you're going to have an excellent running offense, still a good passing offense and a good to maybe great defense. I think that's how you're going to see them develop and they'll win in different ways this year. Thoughts? Well, that's a very optimistic view at this point. Uh, maybe that will come to pass. Uh, I really like what the defense is doing. We talked about that after the first game. This did not look like last season's defense. Forget the stats, and the stats have been very good against weak opponents. Tennessee is harassing the pass or piling up sacks, tackles for loss, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but so the defense is better. I mean, you don't even need to see the stats. It's just faster, stronger, and it, I think it has more depth. So that's a good thing. But the offense – I'm really questioning the receivers now. Uh, I'm curious about some spots in the offensive line. Tennessee's success under Hypel has been predicated on 45-point games. 
you better come in when you're playing his team, you better plan on scoring a whole bunch of points. Now, maybe as you're pointing out, maybe things shift. I'm not willing. I'm not willing yet to say this is going to be a great running team. You, you got to see it against SEC competition, uh, not against Austin P and Virginia. Um, so yeah, that's a, I think it can lean more on its defense. So maybe it doesn't have to score 45 points to win a big game. Maybe it can score 35. Uh, but I still would like to see, I'd like to see more evidence against higher competition. That's all.